Okay, we're on. The function of f is to find the real values of x by um, f of x is to x plus y. The function g is defined when we're given the inverse of g. Um, it's given that f of g to the minus 1 over 12 is 9. Find the value of a and hence solve the equation. It's, there's a lot going on here, isn't there? We need to take a moment to think about what, what we're being asked to do. Um, they've, they've thrown a lot of words and there's no structure to this. We've, we've got seven marks to try and sort out. Right, well, we do need to find the value of a. That's, that's something. We've been given some information. We've been given, right at the start, that f of g to the minus 1 of 12 is equal to 9. Okay? And, and actually, I think, well, we've got everything we need to know to, to do something with that, haven't we? Um, that means that, uh, well, what can we do? If we, if we put 12 into G, and then take that answer and put it into F, then we end up with 9. So we can work our way through that. That means that F of, well, the inverse of G of 12 is the cube root of 12 minus A, and we're told that that equals 9. So that's our input into the function F. And f is 2x plus 5, so that's twice the cube root of 12 minus a, um, plus 5 is equal to 9. So there's, there's my equation. That's what that statement that we were given needs us logically to. Let's not worry about the fact that this is a bit of a mess in here. We've got twice something plus 5 equals 9, so we can unpick that to start with. That would be twice the cube root of 12 minus a equals 4. If we take the 5 away from both sides, if we divide both sides by 2, we've got the cube root of 12 minus a is equal to 2. I want to get rid of that cube root now, so I'm going to cube both sides. 12 minus a is 8. And I think that means that a must be 4, doesn't it, if we rearrange that equation. So that's quite nice. We managed to get A is 4 out of it by working our way through there. Um, we've done the first bit, find the value of A, and hence solve the equation G of F of X is 68. Let's think where that's going to lead us now. And I reckon we've got um, a couple of choices of this. The first choice that we've got is that we could find the function g. And that might be a sensible thing to do. If we could find the function g, we can then go back and find g of f of x. But, but I'm not sure that we have to do that. Um, let's, think, let's think what this statement means. This means that, that once you put f of x into g, the answer is 68. Well, I think another way of interpreting that is that f of x is equal to the inverse of 68. That would be the same thing, wouldn't it? If, if what you get, you take f of x and you put it into g and you get 68 as your answer. So if you undo the, the 68 bit, then that must leave you with what you got out of f. And we know what the inverse, of, uh, the inverse of g is. The inverse of g was defined as being cube root of x minus a, cube root of x minus 4. So that is the cube root of 68 minus 4. So the cube root of 64. That's quite a nice feeling because the cube root of 64, we can, we can handle that. The cube root of 64 would be... So f of x equals 4, except f of x, that's easy as well, f of x was 2x plus 5, so 2x plus 5 equals 4. We rearrange this, we get 2x is negative 1, so x is minus a half, and there it is done. Quite a few people were successful at the same time by um, 
at this point here, working out the inverse of G and that. Uh, and doing Mr. Minus so, sign. Yeah. Sorry? Mr. Minus sign. I missed Mr. Minus sign there, didn't I? Sorry. Thanks, Sarah. <coughs> and, um, that great introduction. So All right. Um, that's that one done. Uh, right. Um, I'm not sorry.